Stop the press. We've had rain. The arid Sahara of Dilwyn has been replenished. Now I wouldn't be able to tell you how many mil we had because that's what's left of our rain gauge. But we had a good hour of quite heavy rain, not enough to flatten crops, but enough to really soak in. And then a few hours of drizzle. Um, not really a lot in the grand scheme of things, but at the moment, I'll take it. Besides, it's kind of irrelevant how many mil of rain we had anyway. Because with a healthy soil, we had all of the rain. You're probably thinking, what the hell is he on about? But the way we're managing our grazing, our crops, everything on the farm is building resilience into the system, creating a healthier soil. So that means when it does rain, every once in a blue moon, we actually retain the moisture in our soil, keep it on our farm um, and don't let it go down the water courses, run off, taking our nutrients with it. So everything that came out of the sky the other night is now securely in there. So now this leads me on nicely to the importance of leaving big residuals behind when grazing. So this sort of residual is going to retain all of the moisture. Whereas this sort of residual will soon dry out. So if we have a quick rummage under a high residual grass, you can see it's actually visibly a bit damp under here. The water's been retained in this mat of grass, being protected from the sunlight and the soil under here is still a bit wet. And you've got to remember, we're now 48 hours, maybe a bit more on from the heavy rain we had and we're having 26, 27 degree heat and no cloud cover. So it's conditions for evaporation. Now we go back to our short residual grazing and you can see it's gone crispy on top already and that soil is getting dusty. So all of the water that fell on that has been evaporated. Now in this sun and this heat, that ground is cooking and that grass is not going to regrow. Now, I'll demonstrate this with my probe. So, let's get under here. Jab that in there. Give it a minute. So, the soil temperature under the mat of grass is just above 16 degrees, 16.1, I think we're at. Now, we'll have a go in this ugly, ugly residual. Right, so it looks like we're just above 20. So, there's a massive difference between the temperature over there in the nice residual and this stuff that's been grazed harder. That's pretty mad actually, that's blown my mind a bit. That's a four degree difference between this high residual stuff and the stuff over there that was grazed a bit harder. That's mad. Now you think how much quicker that extra four degrees of temperature is gonna be drying that out and slowing that grass down compared to my nice high residual grazing over here. Now it does not take a rocket science to figure out which is going to be growing back more and quicker. So big residuals for the win. Now with my trusty spade, I will show you the importance of having a healthy soil for attaining moisture. So I've quickly just dug a soil pit and we'll have a look at this soil, which I think is fairly healthy. So you can see there's a lovely crumb to it. Roots are finding their way all the way down the profile because it's not compacted. Look at that crumb, that's beautiful. Um, you know, and this is moist, there's moisture in there. So that grass trying to grow in that is having a party really. So in this soil, there's a lot of space, a lot of air pores. Um, that's keeping the soil aerobic 
making sure the biology within it is functioning properly but those air pores are also providing space for water to infiltrate down the profile and then remain stored in that soil so that our grass on top can access it. Now I've come to a bit of a gateway to find an example of some compacted unhealthy soil and you can immediately see you've got these horizontal cracks and that's no good we want vertical lines so here we go it's blocky it's not got a nice crumb to it well there's still a bit of a crumb but not as nice as my previous soil pit and you can tell the difference look how dry it is it's almost dusty um, so this this soil will not intercept rainfall it's not going to infiltrate through here and it's not going to hold on to it so there's your difference between a soil that is in a position to make the most of a rainfall event versus an unhappy soil that the rain will be wasted on now there's people that will explain and put into words what i just said a lot better than me i am just a mere mortal but there's loads of stuff on youtube just search it you'll find it um, I could make a longer video on it, but as I said, other people will explain it better. So listen to them, not me. Anyway, let's hope the rain gods are going to treat us again shortly because we are drying up quickly once again. Just a quick one for you today. Um, hope you learned something. Hope it was worth your time. If you liked it, give it a like. And if you really liked it, subscribe. That'd be great. Cheers. Thank you.